welcome to Nimbia Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is... Uh, I've got no rock pants for this. Silver Quill. Shale and well met. Okay, then. Uh, and also joining us is Sapphire. Happy birthday to me! Hi! Yay! You're 10 years old! Woohoo! I'm 19, and for my birthday, I want Silver to be nice to me for once. You know that expectations are made to be broken, right? <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to wish hard and long for the hopes that you'll actually be nice to me for one MBS show podcast. A girl can dream, right? Yes, she can. She can dream all she wants. Yep. But I tell you, that pink unicorn still hasn't shown up, has it? <laughs> what pink unicorn? That which, that which every child wishes for. No. I've seen DreamWorks Guardians, I do. <laughs> oh, that one. But anywho, like we mentioned last week, on this week's episode, we are going to review Friends Forever, number 29. Published date June 8, 2016. Written by Ted Anderson. Art by Brenda Hickey. Color by Heather Breckel. So, yeah. In this issue, Rarity assists Mod Pie in her rock science interest and helps her discover her inner enthusiasm. Sounds pretty awesome, right? Yes. Yes, yes it does, especially considering haha, ha, crystal pony right here. Crystal obsessed Pegasus right here. Hi. <laughs> so, I think we should hop into first impressions. Uh, last week we went for silver, now Seppi, you first. This is my favorite comic so far in the Friends Forever series. I mean, I like Friends Forever, it's okay, but this one I really do love. Oh my gosh. It features my favorite character with this character that I've liked but not really been interested in in my favorite setting. Features a lot of crystals. Aesthetically, it's my favorite comic especially. And has this very interesting conflict of introversion and extroversion. And I love it. Oh my gosh. That ending with Rarity looking in through Maud's diary and actually seeing how she feels is just, it's such a touching moment because I've been on both spectrums of not really sure how to read people that don't exactly express themselves, but I've also been in that position of being the person who has a hard time expressing themselves. I really love this comic overall, especially the crystals. <laughs> ah, yes, crystals. Silver, so your turn. Well, I enjoyed this a great deal as well. I may not have identified with it as much because I felt so much the story was told from Rarity's perspective that my favorite fans forever, both characters get to show their best throughout the comic. They play off one another. Maud is a character who thrives on humor that betrays audience expectations. It's a scene where they should be excited. She seems meh. People expect a strong reaction. She is, ah, you expect a grand exclamation of emotion. Hi. <laughs> but that's part of her fun. Unfortunately, it's also not really as much a driving force in this comic. That said, it is still fun, energetic. Rarity is in high form with her extreme emotions and is a perfect contrast to Maud. My only thing is, the antagonists in this story are just loco in the Coco. <laughs> yeah. I love her. She's over the top crazy. And she's like every single villain ever. And I love it. <laughs> and the fun part is she dresses like, uh, having just talked about Daring Do, we've now got uh, Indiana Jones villain lookalike. And it's kind of funny considering... I do, never mind. I was going to go on with like this archaeology class I've <laughs> recently been taking and it's like, I don't know yet. Wait, Anyways. wait, wait. Do you have <laughs> someone who dresses like that in class? No. Oh. No. Oh. But based on what I've acquired from archaeology class, I don't really see that happening, if that makes sense. <laughs> Alrighty then. Alrighty then. Anyways. Mm -hmm. And as for me, well, I, I didn't know what to expect about this comic because, well, it's two ponies who share a common interest, which is, well, Rarity likes gems 
and what likes stones, dirt, anything to do with the ground. So pairing them up would have been crazy insane. And honestly, what we got here was crazy insane. It's a nice balance here, getting the total extreme end of the uh, emotional spectrum. But what we don't know is how Mort feels inside. And in this comic here, we get a sense that, oh wow, that means all the time that things happened to her and all the emotions that she was dealing with Pinkie Pie. Wow, that would be... Ooh, spoil, spoilers, like we're going to go into it later on and talk about it, but wow, I, I do like this one. I, I do like the inside peek inside Mod's brain. But anywho, that aside, if you haven't read the comic, please do, because it's a fun read. And if you have, please join us, we're going to go spoilerific in this one. So, we start off with our main hero, Rarity, going to a convention oh my god how many conventions are they considering how many celebrations they have and holidays uh i'm assuming there's at least a con a week Equ yeah equestrian con crud is awful oh god no uh, i have a criticism with this comic the only thing that i have trouble with is the cursive writing that rarity does do you want me to read it no, it's not that. It's like I just have a hard time reading it when I'm just trying to read the comics. Like I think this happens later on with another comic that does the same thing. It's with this one it's not bad, but it takes some time for me to kind of figure things out. Which is kind of annoying. Dear Diary, what a tremendously exciting week it has been. It all started at the annual equestrian geology and gem Logical Society Convention, EGGS for short. I'd like to attend and see what new gemstones have been discovered so I can use them in my designs. That's what the first thing says. Uh. And in that first panel, we can play a game. Oh. S spot the recurring characters. <laughs> I can see a few. Uh, the text guy. The Oh, we can see the police. Who else? Uh, let's see. There's the tax guy from the Applejack and uh, Mayor Mayor Micro, mm -hmm. the police officer from the Adventures with Trixie in Manhattan, mm. trying to trying to catch the thief. Yeah. Uh, there's the uh, one of the what are they called? Candy the Snackaroo. Yeah. Yes. The ca the Candy Twins who look so sinister. <laughs> yeah. With Pinky, and I'm pr and there's this is not as far as I know a recurring character. But there's a mohawk pony in the lower left oh, corner, yeah, yeah, which, too. which I find just fascinating. But um, is it only me with the cursive writing that has a problem, or is it just like everyone? I did have a bit of a problem at first. It's been a while since I've written, written in cursive, so it can be a bit hard to see. I was taught to write in cursive, so I'm a little more familiar with it. Well, I was taught to at a very young age, but... It wasn't oh, my so, forte. Oh, so last week? <laughs> yeah. Silver? That wasn't a mean comment, but happy birthday. Yeah, happy I'm birthday. I'm 19. 4K. That's what you want for, us to believe. 4K, you so must be, be hard. What but, makes me look like I'm 10 years old? Well, let's see here, because right now, you've got a chipified Saffy Heart song on a cloud. As your icon. Yep. That's all I see. In fact, you look Do like you you're... Do you need me to change it to more no, grotesque, no, no, uh, no, no, risque no. type of profile picture, Silver? Nope. No thanks, elior has got that covered. <laughs> oh my. Oh my, indeed. Actually, now you got me thinking. I'm just going to look through my contacts and see who's got the scariest icon. <laughs> uh... Oh, wait, I have a winner. It's me, Silver Quill. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, as Rarity goes walking around the corn floor, someone taps her on her back or flank, and it's Mod Pie. What a surprise! Hello. <laughs> yes, that that is her reaction. Wow. <laughs> I love it. And the whole story goes from well Rarity's point of view, where she tells the story in her diary uh, about how they went to. Um, show floors, not really went to show floors. It's like how they just went to go to the panel. Um, recent development by Slippery, how do you say that name? 
Spelunking. Oh, my in Spelunking. Oh, my bad. Oh, uh, no, was I? Oh, but still, um, they went to the panel, listened to the, uh, whatchamacallit, speech and whatnot. Or lecture. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Listen to the lecture and had a great time. And uh, what is the work here? Pro- Professor Deep Strata is her name. And Maud is a big fan of Professor Deep Strata. And she doesn't have the courage to go meet the professor because, well, she's an icon. She's the senpai. Well, that's not really a problem, is it? Like, oh. I don't really see that in the comic. Then here's the thing that the the expression here betrays what she really feels. Later on, when we go to the end, we get to see what she really, really feels. Well, we don't know that until the end. Yeah, but here, like she says that, oh yes, that sounds like a fascinating idea, and doesn't go to visit the caves. Yeah, it, my bad, sorry, but Rarity pushes her and just gets info. Rarity literally pushes her to move forward. Yes. Where? Well, come on! <laughs> yeah. Now, now, here's the thing. Professor Deep Strata is looking at all kinds of lawsuits. Mm-hmm. She's basically encouraging her students to go in untrained or uncertified to go spelunking in uncharted territory. We are one rock slide away from, like, uh, what is it, 28 hours? Oh, God, no. Uh, and then there's that scene where Deadpool shows you what really happens. Oh my. And so, yes, I've, I've made this very, very dark and scary. Oh no. Happy birthday, Sappy! <laughs> could be worse, I could play the Metal Ocalypse birthday song. Oh god, no. I actually would enjoy that considering my origins of how I grew up. You were, you were powered by death metal? <laughs> Pretty much. For nice. ten years. Happy birthday. <laughs> Did my profile picture change yet? Yes. I'm try- I'm almost afraid to look, but I shall. Oh my, you kinky devil. What are you? Am I ten now? No, now you're thirteen. <laughs> God damn it. Um, anywho, uh, Actually, wait, that's that's the anime proportions of a 13-year-old. Oh, you. Oh, my. <laughs> Manga drew it, not me. Oh, boy. Oh, my, my, my. Uh, people at home are going to enjoy this because, oh, God, no. Uh, For the final episode of the NBS show, before the Puritanicals go after us, <laughs> won't someone please think of the children? Uh, now I know why I'm rushing things, because this kind of things. <laughs> it's true. We We tend to slow things up, but... But let's introduce our antagonist. Dum, dum, dum. Very treasure who, ironically, her cutie mark is not technically a treasure, but a treasure map. Yes, and if she were to go back to law school, like at the end of the comic, she'd probably work in the treasury department. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Yes. But it seems that Barry Treasure here claims that she will be the first to reach to the caves that the lecturer, which is uh, Professor Strata, was mentioning about. But again, she's she's sending everyone headlong into danger. I I cannot stress enough. This is not a good teacher. Well, if Celestia can do it, so can she. I never said Celestia was a good teacher. I never said that she was a good teacher. <laughs> yes, you did. No, I'm just saying that if Celeste could do it, so can she. Equestria has, <laughs> has the highest mortality rate for students ever. <laughs> uh, so true. Why do you think this situation never comes up? There's no competition <laughs> because most of the students are dead. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, but still, um, Mott exposits here that she tries to take credit for every single one of my discoveries. And I think... Her pet rock is bigger. <laughs> oh my. She is basically my, she is basically my eternal name. She's basically a, she's basically a plagiarizing twat. Hey, that's not nice. In college that would not fly. If you plagiarize, you get either a zero or an F and just fail the class overall. Hey, if you can get away with the hustle, you gotta respect that man. I don't care. No, I don't. I, no, I don't. No. 
Actually, it's I loathe a person even more if they get away with it and think that somehow justifies them. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so true. But anywho, after Baby Treasure claims that she will be the first, um, well, it's a rat race right about now. And oh my god, that pink pony with how she's doing her neck. Oh, that's gotta hurt. No, she's just going, yeah, and know. then walking out like a snooty nose in the air pony. Uh, but she's not a unicorn. Yeah. Actually. She's still going to be a snobby. She's basically going to be Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Actually, I think I think her name is Invertebrate Nelly. Ah. <laughs> uh. uh, wow. But yeah. Uh, n- now, <laughs> Rarity's gun ho. Rarity is... Rarity's fire has been lit. She wants to be the first. She, she won't be defeated by... I cannot by... let a friend of mine be defeated by that... That uncouth upstart! We are going to explore those caves first. You are going to write an amazing paper on them. And you are going to crush your rival beneath your elegant hoof. Are you with me? Okay. okay. Sigh. <laughs> <sighs> uh, and so we get to see Rarity put on a new dress. Not really a dress, a new outfit. And I have to say, this is... Looking really cool. I see you have a poofy shirt. <laughs> it's like a pirate. <laughs> yes. And it's fabulous. Anyway, so Rarity gets a taxi, and then when she tries to take a blimp, somebody took all of the tickets. I wonder who. Is it Mary? It usually is. You know how he likes blimps. <laughs> yes. No? Kind of, anyway, he... there's also a pilot there. Who is also apparently going to the mountains or something. Are you a pilot? Uh, yep. Can you fly the Crystal Mountains? Uh, yep. Can we come along? Nope. Well, I did my best. <laughs> Dear Maud, allow me to try for a bit. Let's see what she does. My good pilot, uh, we are two poor ponies engaged in a race for satisfaction. Uh, for scientific discovery, we need the assistance of a skilled and experienced pilot. Would you speak? So basically, Rarity uses all of her charms to get to the pilot and tries to get on a ride. Yep, and it works. Yay! And there was much rejoicing. Yay! Yay! <laughs> but then they got stranded and had to eat the pilot, and there was much rejoicing. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> But still, um, Maud and Rarity exchanged some, some lines here. What was this like? Basically, you need to learn to express yourself more. You'll, it's not as obvious to everyone else. Uh, her exact words are, I do express myself. When ponies ask me what I'm thinking or how I'm feeling, I tell them. Yep. Yep. So, Rarity says more to it, and Maud doesn't really think much about it, and when Rarity just hammers it on, she, well, she thinks about it. And they arrive in this location where I'm thinking it's, I want to say Saddle Arabia, but not really, because all these are ponies, not horses. It's somewhere similar. Yeah. Anyways, it's a canter time. Canter time. Oh, that's a new name. I'm trying to think of what that is, the equivalent in the real world. Clementine? Oh, my darling. Oh, oh my darling. darling. Oh, my darling. darling. Clementine. Clementine. Uh, something, something we can't sing. The audience just unsubscribe. Oh, no, I need a sub, <laughs> man. Take that back. Take that back. Uh, Silver, you need to promote the MBS show on your channel. It's the only way. Uh, Promoted. I shall promote again. Yes. E. So, was it arrived at Clanton? How do you say this? Canter Cantertine, and then they get a camel ride or a hay ride, and then go through blistering winds and scorching deserts and some other Shrek reference that involves tires and mines and stuff. <laughs> and tigers. And tigers. And a cranky old coal pony who's like, get off my lawn! <laughs> oh, yes. 
I, I just like Brenda Hickey's artwork here. She she draws well. So we've had lions and tigers and mares. Oh, mine. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, especially Rarity's look when uh, the guy pops out of the uh, cart dirt. <laughs> I mean, th- talk about a study in contrast. The mod, oh, Rarity. <laughs> And what did the mind pony say that's really important? Um, did you say adventuring types have other ponies come true here? So, yeah, it seems that Buried Treasure was here first and she's looking for a way to get to said cavern to look for coal. The caves. Yeah, the caves. To look for, like, diamonds and stuff. And looky, when they reach down to the tunnel, there's Buried Treasure ready to... Burn the whole entire bridge. Which is... And I'm just sitting here wondering, how are they even going to get back over when they do get to the, um, caves? Yeah. And, and Barry Treasure was forced to eat her assistance, and there was much rejoicing. <laughs> Yay. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Although, here's my question. What kind of business sense does she have? You never burn your bridges. Yeah, so true. Even with ha. rivals. <laughs> Uh, but still, Brenda Hickey and Heather here, they work well. Like, the artwork is awesome, the coloring is awesome, that look is menacing, and the scene after that, yeah, that's just too good. Yes, inhale and sigh. And so, Barry Treasure says, have fun with the bats and son of a gun. We get a pretty darn cute bat. I know. I know, they're so cute. And Has the name Belfry already been taken? I'm not sure. No. Is the name Belfry? He should be. <laughs> and I I don't think we mentioned this before. The whole time that this story is being told is being told in diary form where Rarity is writing the whole event that's happening right now. And, well, we can see that Maud is trying to look for some things and Rarity is just really sad and giving up. And we get bats. Yay. We got Batman. We can't stop here. This is bat country. <laughs> Batmare, banana, Batmare. Sorry. No problem. So, uh, let's see. Rarity places her diary back and, well, she thinks that uh, she should just write something. I suppose I'll make for an exciting chapter in my diary at least. And, oops, she accidentally picked Maud's diary. Picked up Maud's. And, and then we get this warm smile from Maud as she says, It's okay, go ahead, read it. You may see another perspective. I should, what I see is the crumbling of my worldview as Maud is emoting. What is this thing? I don't know how to handle this. It's actually really adorable. I love Maud's facial expressions. I mean, I love Blank Stare, Dante, Maud, but at the same time, it's really fun to see her expressions, especially that eyebrow raise with the fire speech bubble that look right there oh my gosh i love it and how cute is she when she's sad during the blimp ride it's adorable Uh, yep and this is what i said from before that we get to see another side of mod We, we we usually don't see this this is how she sees herself and usually when we see mod She's just monotone, doesn't really emote much. In But here, we get to see her emote. We get to see her smile. We get to see her excited. We get to see her sad. And this is what makes me enjoy this comic. This is what makes me feel... Well, this is what made me feel for Maud. And the scene, like I mentioned before, she was afraid to meet with uh, the professor. She was angry when um, Barry Treasure came along. She was sad when they had to write the blimp and whatnot. And, th- like, just looking here, uh, I-, I do love this. Like, I didn't see more expressions of Maud. It's really awesome. I really do love that. I don't know how Silver can get so freaked out over expre- over expressive Maud face, though. It's, it was one of the 15 commandments. The other five got dropped. Thou shall not have Maud a moat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but still. But if you want to talk about emoting, Rarity on the next page after she realizes what she's done. Yeah. She just has such a blubbering face and I love it. Even the bat is crying. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, Maud, I- It's so cute. 
I love how both of the um, bats are hanging on Maud and Rarity just basically reflect who they're hanging out with. <laughs> so true. It's so cute. Yep, and well, now here we get to see that Maud here is excited for this. She wants to finish this because all that hard work that Rarity put in, she wants to do it. She wants to find a way. And that previously, we didn't mention Maud was knocking on the walls for something. And well, she's trying to find a fault point on the wall because she knows that it will connect to the caverns. But the problem is the, the fault lies not in the wall, but in ourselves. Oh, and then they take a slipping slide page to the cavern, which is full of crystals. Oh my gosh. Silver, Norman, mine those crystals out and give them to me for my birthday or something. I don't know. I want crystals for my birthday, please. We'll try. <laughs> At least I'm not making you hunt for diamonds. Especially blood diamonds. What's the difference between a crystal and a gem? Hmm. A crystal... I'm not an expert. I'm not going to say I'm an expert on stuff, but crystals and gems are the same, but I'm assuming there's a different chemical makeup into the material, if you know what I mean. There are certain, like, materials that go into different gems, like how there's a difference between a ruby and a sapphire. Sapphires are basically rubies, but without carbon something. It's like that. Hmm. All I, right. sh I shall take your word for it because I, I didn't understand what you just said. <laughs> uh... Ha ha! For once you don't get my references! It really must be my birthday. <laughs> oh, there you go. Say happy birthday. Didn't even have to get your crystal. <laughs> Yay! But anyway, they arrive at the crystal cave and guess who arrives second? It's Barry Treasure. <laughs> Who's hopping mad to the point where she's going back to law school. Yeah. Which, well, she does seem to be more venomous than she might actually flourish there. <laughs> and Maud emotes. Uh... Well, Maud doesn't really emote, but the bat is definitely like, Yes! <laughs> yep. <laughs> I want to suck your blood. <laughs> but I'm worried about catching jerk. <laughs> 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 yeah. And so we leave Mott here writing her diary and trying to talk to those rocks. <laughs> well, actually, it's not too far off. Like, crystals, certain chemical makeups, they have been proven to have, like, a sort of magic to them in real life to the point where they can have a human's heartbeat. This is true. Look it up. <laughs> actually, so it be what, far off. one crystal is actually talking. The one in the lower right corner. Yes, it says the end. Dun, dun, dun. Oh god, the crystals are telling us the end of the world is coming. No, the end of the episode. Oh yeah, I yeah. think it's just the end of the comic, Silver. No, that that crystal is part of the seventh day endeth cultith. Uh, it's, it, it's been, Illuminati confirmed, right? It's been preaching for the past several decades. Repent, the end is near. The other crystals are like, just don't look at Gary. Don't talk to him. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and with that, the comic ends. Uh, pretty fast though. So, um, what can we say? This is pretty fun, pretty exciting. I think I emote a bit. <laughs> uh, let's go for final thoughts. Seppi. Like I said, I absolutely love this comic. I adore it in all of its glory with all of these crystals and all that stuff. Yeah, I just love it. And Maud, oh my gosh, I love her in this comic, especially that ending scene where we actually get to look inside what she's really like. I just really enjoy this comic. It's going to be my favorite for a very good long while, at least, until something better comes along. And Silver? Oh, this is a lot of fun. I mean, it is this great study in contrast, the overly expressive pony and the very reserved pony and the contrast that comes between the two. I do think Rarity oversteps her bounds in, in trying to tell a pony how they should act. This is a problem that I see a lot in life and even in this fandom saying, well, this pony shouldn't be this way. They should sometimes even go so far as to say this pony needs to be medicated. It's like, no. The whole point of this is that there are different ways to be people. And some people are not the most expressive. It doesn't mean... They are empty. It just means they don't really make it known. And that can be a barrier. It can be a hurdle to overcoming getting to know someone. 
but you don't have to force them to change or lecture them. Be more like me. Of course. So, but it is enjoyable all around, and and Rarity's reaction when she realizes what she's done is just priceless. Yes. It's like, oh, oh, Rarity, this is why you're so awesome. <coughs> and that's about the long and the short of it for me. All right. And as for me, you hurt me. If you if you listen to this far, you hurt me. I really enjoy this comic. There's a few gripes that I have with it. That's basically with the writing, but that's easily overcome with, uh, well, A, transcripts online, and B, just get good. But overall, I do like the expression that Maud has. Like the climax there with Rarity reading that part, that page. It really gets me. Like, you see Maud here, monotone, doesn't say much, but inside her head or her feelings, that's what she feels. Insecure, happy... Um, rage, all that thing, and having her emote that way makes us think, oh wow, how does she feel when Pinkie Pie was almost crushed by a boulder? Like, you, you can just think about how she would react, like how her expression is when it comes to that situation there. And Mod here has not been my favorite character but with this comic coming out i would say that she's bumped up a few so yeah i would say if you have the chance go read it agreed but anywho silver what's next week's thing gonna be well, i believe we're back to yan episodes mm. we had just tackled the uh stranger than fan fiction which i forgot to mention is a complete lie nothing is stranger than fan fiction <laughs> But, yeah, especially shipping fan fictions. Uh, but now it's time. But now it's time that we get things back and put the cart before the ponies. Oh. No. <laughs> so giddy up! What a terrible ending to my birthday. No, no. it's gonna be Poor good. Gay. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Uh, the cart before the pony. Is this some kind of um thing? Idealism. Putting the cart before the po before the horse. Oh, okay. Uh, the title is a reference to the e- idiom. Idiom is how you say it. Idiom. Uh, yeah. Silver, I'm going to hope that you got your episodes mixed up. Why? Because I really don't like this episode. Ah. <laughs> More on the MBS show next week. Yes, yeah. watch as we send Safi into a conniption. Yep. <laughs> uh, there's so much we can talk about. Oh, but anyway, that's for next week. And I have an idea of how to tackle that one. <laughs> uh, so does Safi with a chrome bar. <laughs> uh, but still. Anyway, uh, we'll catch you guys next week with another amazing episode of the NBS Show Reviews. Be sure to catch us on the iTunes and Stitcher Radio because, yeah, we're there. We are on the Apple device and the Android device if you ever want to take us on the go. So, yay, I know you. some of you do. Woohoo! Oh my! <laughs> uh, so I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been podcasting with a 15 year old. <laughs> I'm 19, and I've been Sapphire Heart Song. Uh, and we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing review. See ya! Adios! Bye bye! She's turning 32. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mother, not me. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I love you, Silver, but yeah! We, we often destroy the things we love. Yes. Oh, by the way, happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday.